Pastor of El Poblito United Methodist Church in Taos, New Mexico. Welcome to worship. We've come to the close of the season of Epiphany, the season of light, and to prepare in a few days to begin the season of Lent, which begins on Ash Wednesday, February 17th this year. Today is a Sunday of transition. A day when we move from one season in the church year to another. We in the church call this Sunday Transfiguration Sunday. The Sunday we celebrate the transfiguration of Jesus. So it seems fitting to end the season of light with a light so bright that no one on earth can produce it. A flash, a brilliant, blinding revelation eliminating who Jesus is. The actual location of the mountaintop on which Jesus was transfigured is not named or known. Perhaps because everyone at the time knew where it was, or perhaps because without a named location, we can all identify with mountaintop experiences. May the light shine on us. And may we hear God say again, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to Him. From Mark 9, verses 2 to 9, Jesus took with Him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and His clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to the three disciples, Elijah, along with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Really, Peter didn't know what to say, for... He and the other disciples were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when those three disciples looked around, they saw no one was there anymore but Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. And now let us hear these words of Jesus to his disciples later on, as recorded in the Gospel of John. No one has greater love than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. Jesus calls those closest to him friends. And friendship is something we all know something about. We've all been a friend to another, and we all have friends. 
Sometimes we have friends for a reason. An example of that is when we first moved to New Mexico back in the mid 80s, I lived in Cedar Crest, Ron and I did, and we, I carpooled to Santa Fe every day for work at the Santa Fe Indian Hospital. It was about an hour's drive each way. And so I carpooled with a guy who worked for the New Mexico Fish and Game Department. I wouldn't really call us friends, but we were friendly and we were friends for a reason, because we were carpooling together. Sometimes I've been friends for a season. You probably have too. It was a particular time and place. People I went to school with, colleagues at work, the other parents on our son's baseball team. Ron and I met when we both joined a bicycle club, a Sunday afternoon gathering of folks who meet to bicycle together. So friends for a season. Some of you have probably had friends that you've known for a period of time and when something changed in your life, you moved on. You remain friendly, but perhaps not friends. And probably many of you have developed unlikely friendships. People that you would have never guessed you would have become friends with. That's the most wonderful thing about being part of a church family, a church community, is that you meet people and engage in developing relationships with people whose paths you might have not crossed. When I served a church in Albuquerque, I became good friends, lifelong friends now, with a man named Dave, an unlikely friendship. Dave's a wannabe cowboy. Maybe he was born in the wrong era. Never got to live the life, but dresses the part, and we've become lifelong friends. He's been up to visit Ron and I here in Taos. Or I think about Jake. Jake, who lived hard and is a motorcycle riding kind of guy. A good friend. An unlikely friendship developed. Someone whose path I would have not crossed if it hadn't been for church. And then... We get the chance sometimes to develop friends for a lifetime. My longest lasting friendship outside of a relationship with my husband, Ron, is with a dear friend, Chris. We became friends back in the mid eighties and we've maintained it ever since. Building friendships takes time. It takes time and a willingness to pay attention to one another, to nurture the friendship. It also takes courage. You've got to risk being vulnerable, sharing yourself, making yourself known and letting the other person be known to you and having compassion, having an open heart, Friendships grow, I believe, out of shared experiences and their journeys of love. And all of that is true with our friendship with Jesus, a friendship that can last a lifetime. It takes spending time with Jesus in prayer, meditation, daily devotion. It requires opening ourselves up and being vulnerable allowing Jesus into our lives. It's a journey, not a day trip. Some of the deepest friendships that I have ever had have come about because someone else introduced me to someone. That's true with my friend Chris. Joan Roberts, who is the pastor of Mountainside United Methodist Church, introduced me to Chris and said, you know, I think you two would be friends. We were about the same age, had some similar interests, and Joan was right. We became friends. And through Chris introducing me to other women, like Monica and a good friend, Ruth, I became friends with them. 
the introductions had ripple effects. So those, those friendships built upon one another. I think that's true here at Shared Table. People often develop unlikely friendships with people whose paths they might have not crossed. And by introduction, by someone saying, let me introduce you to, and from there someone else introduces them to someone else. Friendships can have a rippling effect. We also all know that friendships can fray and fracture. Sometimes they fray and fade away simply because of circumstance. Someone moves, we retire, life takes a different turn. Sometimes friendships though fray and fracture because we stop paying attention to them. We don't do the work of caring for that friendship and nurturing it. And sometimes it's because of trust has been betrayed. That can happen too with our relationship with Jesus. We stop making time for Jesus in our lives. Or perhaps we've trespassed, sinned against God or one another and perhaps don't even feel worthy of the friendship. What then? Well, that's what the season of Lent is all about. It's about confession and restoration of relationship. Friendships are formed and lived out mostly in the ordinary moments of our lives. But every so often there comes an extraordinary moment like that that Peter, James, and John experienced on the mountaintop when they saw Jesus transfigured and heard the voice of God saying, this is my son, the beloved, Listen to him. May we listen to Jesus' call to forgive one another and know that we are forgiven. And so as we move towards the season of Lent, may we open our heart to forgiveness and friendship. Those early disciples, Peter, James, and John, must have been so moved when they heard Jesus say much later in their journey with Jesus, I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. I call you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. Not a servant, but a friend. And the work of a friend is to love one another. So I'm inviting you, let's journey together as friends, asking ourselves, what do I need to do to be a better friend to someone here and now? And how can I build a stronger friendship with Jesus? Let us live lives of love and friendship. Amen. We join with me in prayer. Lord, we stand in awe that you call us your friends. Thank you for revealing what you have done, are doing, and will do in your kingdom. We pray for relationships that will refresh and renew us, encourage us, and inspire us, and ask that in turn you help us to be the type of friend who enriches the life of another. And now, O oh Lord, hear our prayer as we say the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Shared Table says thank you to SIDS. SIDS has been a long time and generous contributor of donated foods to the Shared Table. 
thanks to SIDS, we're able to fill the food bags with some great produce and other grocery items. Thanks, SIDS! People have walked this way before, and people will follow us. Thank you for helping, leaving a legacy of love and care for our community. Thank you for giving to El Pablito UMC. You can donate online at elpabletoumc.org or dropping a check off at the church or mailing a check in. I invite you to join us on Zoom on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Send me an email at elpabletoumc at gmail.com. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace. Go in love. And before you go, let's sing together with Claire. Amen.